and welcome to another Seed World Giant Views interview. My name is Alex Martin, and I'm the editor of Seed World Magazine. And today I am joined by Jennifer Cruz, who is the Senior Director of Meetings and Services with the American Seed Trade Association, or ASTA, as everyone is probably more familiar with it. We are gearing up for the ASTA um, CSS and Seed Expo meeting in Chicago. And I think we're all sad to say it's the last CSS and Seed Expo in Chicago this year. But Jennifer is going to talk to us today about the move from Chicago to bright, sunny Orlando. So thank you so much for joining me today, Jennifer. We uh, really appreciate you taking the time. Um, I thought it would be fun today just to kick off with some, some memories. What's your favorite thing about working with the CSS and Seed Expo um, for the past couple of years in Chicago? Um, I, I think my favorite thing is probably how it brings the seed industry alive every year. It's very influential. It, it creates so many connections between people, and sometimes it can even really be career changing for people. There's a, there's a great story about our current chair, Jim Schweigert from Grow Alliance and how he first came to the CSS and Seed Expo many years ago and he didn't know anyone and he was at the end of the day and he was by himself and just went to the big bar at the Hyatt Regency Chicago and sitting there at the bar was Don Wortman of Seedway who was one of our past ASTA chairs from 2003. It's actually the first year I joined ASTA as the meetings director but Don kind of took him under his wing and told him how to get to know people and told him the lay of the land and what to get involved in at the conference. And now Jim's worked his way up all the way to being the ASTA chair this year. So there's just so much history and so much legacy to this event. I think we're creating important memories every year for the whole industry and, and moving the industry forward. I love that. I love that you also got your same start with Jim uh, in the same year, but that's awesome. So let's talk a little bit about why we're, we're looking at a change in 2023 for ASTA. Why did ASTA want to look into moving the CSS and Seed Expo conference? Well, I mean, we had always evaluated it for many years. We had always surveyed on that question from our conference participants because whenever you're going back to the same place again and again and again, and we had been to this hotel since 1977 every year, um, you always want to make sure that you're gauging the, the feelings of the audience. And for the longest time, that data was always telling us to return. Um, but finally, that feedback started to change, and we started to get uh, different opinions about where to go. We had always heard from the members why are we going somewhere so cold in December? And why can't we go somewhere in Orlando or somewhere warm? Uh, Orlando was actually mentioned many times from the feedback that we got. But we also kind of took the time during the pandemic to sit back and regroup and reevaluate what's really best for the members and what are we really there to do. And this feedback is starting to change. And we really see a lot of limitations to our purpose in the in the current venue, the way that it's laid out. And, you know, we're there to create connections between people. And so finally, we did a deeper dive. We did more conversations with our key stakeholders. We had some focus group discussions. We had meetings with our exhibitors. And finally, all of that, plus some quantitative surveys, just just pointed to the, the ultimate decision to make a move. Oh, that's perfect. I love that that one of the reasons y'all look into it is because of uh, uh, wanting some warmer weather. But I know that's not the only reason that you <laughs> wanted to look into a new venue. What kind of put Orlando at the top of your list? Well, you might be surprised. Um, I think a lot of people might be surprised if you're not in the profession of event planning I think a lot of people just think this country is full of huge hotels in any city you'd ever want to go to, but that's really not the case. Um, if you're going to have an event this big, and this event is typically between 2,000 and 2,500 people, most of the cities that you would have a convention in, especially first tier cities that we want to stay within so that there's good airlift and accessibility and services and, and so on. Um, the very few that have large enough hotels 
to contain this event in one hotel without switching to a convention center and having the audience split up into five or six hotels. And then you're setting up a bus shuttle route and you're just kind of killing that feeling of community that we've been enjoying in Chicago for so many years. The Hyatt Regency Chicago, where we have been, is one of those unique properties that can contain this event with as big of a trade show as it is as big of a educational session program that we have and as many people and hotel rooms that we need. It's a very unique property in the Midwest um, for them to be able to contain us. So when we looked at moving, it really was only two or three cities that we could narrow it down to where we could maintain that one hotel, everybody under one roof um, layout, which is what we really wanted to maintain for people to be able to continue to find each other all day and, and make those connections. So um, of all the cities in the country that have some of those hotels, Orlando has 11 of them. So it's very easy to, to turn to Orlando. It's a pretty affordable city as conventions go. And statistically, the Orlando Convention Visitors Bureau will tell you that most conventions, when they move to Orlando, they get a spike in attendance for going there. So obviously that's a big plus. And yeah, the weather's nice too, which as you said, is not really our top consideration, but we, we looked at a few other final contender cities and those still would have split us up into several hotels and a convention center. So it was pretty easy to narrow it down to this one. And it really helps that this new property, the Hyatt Regency Orlando, is a sister property of the Hyatt Regency Chicago. And they're already networked together and they compare notes a lot. Sometimes they even compare managers. So it's, it makes it an extra smooth transition. And I know that is something that is on the top of your list for not just ASTA, but for all of the members, having a smooth transition to a new property is going to be fantastic. Now, I heard you mention that that a lot of the, the focus that went into this is making sure that you can maintain some of that, that community feeling. Um, when we move to Orlando, is networking still going to be the biggest focus for the conference? And um, how are you all going to make sure that that happens? Well, this new property, the Hyatt Regency Orlando, um, is really tailor-made for that. The, one of the best advantages about this, this new venue is that we can put every aspect of this event in the same hallway, in the same area of the hotel. And not only that, but that area is filled with sunshine and walls of windows and all on the street level. So we will be able to position the exhibits as a pathway to the sessions where before they were very separated and you had to decide to go down to visit them. And not only that, but the variety of small company meeting rooms that are being held in conjunction with the conference, there's about a hundred small meeting rooms right there next to this same ballroom where the exhibits and sessions are. So it's going to just be a dream for networking and you know, I wouldn't say that networking was always our number one focus. Um, this this conference began as the Corn and Sorghum Seed Research Conference. And before that, like actually in 1946, it was the Hybrid Corn Industry Conference, I think is the right name. And we'll have a history display about that at the conference this year so that we can make sure we, I get that wording right. But it was essentially a seed research conference for corn and sorghum and then for, for soybean, and those were two different conferences with two different registrations. And then in 1977, we added the trade show, which is when it moved to the Hyatt Regency Chicago because they had a big enough exhibit hall for that. And I think over the years, I mean, mainly it was researchers going, clamoring after that printed book of pr proceedings of what was being presented as the new research for corn and soybean. but. Over the years, I think people caught on that some of the key players in the seed business are there and the networking started to take on a life of its own and more and more companies started planning their meetings surrounding our meeting and it just kind of blossomed. So now I would say networking is pretty much the number one reason people go. No, and it sounds like that—that that is just wonderful with the new setup for Orlando where everyone's going to be 
not separate in different wings of a hotel. They'll actually be, it sounds like in the same area of the hotel at almost all points of, of, of the conference. That's fantastic to hear. Um, final question of the day, Jennifer, as we get closer to our final year in Chicago, um, what's one thing that you want members to, to walk away with today and know about the change that y'all are making? I think the, the main thing I want them to know is that the best is yet to come for this conference. This is a time of reinvention in many ways. Um, I'll give you a little sneak preview that on the last day of the conference this year, we're going to be announcing the new name of the conference, which is going to change also next year with the move to Orlando. Um, this is an opportunity for us to branch out and for all of the member companies who participate and engage at this conference, because so many companies have their, their own strategy, their own to-do list and their own goals to achieve while they're there. Um, going back to what I said about it, it just comes alive. Um, this is an opportunity for all of those member companies to just really be creative. Like there, there are no limits to what we can do. The, the facility is so large, there's way more square footage. Even the load-in hallways are huge. There's no pillars in any of the meeting space. There are things that we had tried to do over the years that we just couldn't do because of physical limitations at the property. And all of those doors are blown wide open in Orlando. So I would encourage seed industry companies to think about this and think about what their goals are and how we can help them advance towards their own goals by being creative and, and really having some fun with this new venue. Awesome. No, that's perfect, Jennifer. And I'm sure other than just myself, I'm sure everyone is so excited to see what the next iteration of the, the conference is going to turn out to be, because I know it's everyone's favorite to attend every year. So thank you so much today, Jennifer. Um, and thank you so much to everyone who tuned in and listened to our Giant Views interview. Make sure to stay tuned. We are going to have some more interviews rolling out as the ASTA, CSS, and Seed Expo continues. But until then, we'll see you soon. Thanks, everyone.